In this video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate muscle energy for the cervical spine. We're going to go over positioning for the OA, the AA, and the typical cervicals C2 to C7. For all of our examples, our patient is going to be supine. We're going to be seated at the head of the table, and our table height and chair height are going to be appropriate so that we can rest our arms comfortably on the table throughout all of the techniques. I'm going to be putting my hands on a few different areas along your neck and up by your head, pushing in a few different directions. Uh, let me know if there's any tenderness, if you're uncomfortable at any point, if you need me to stop and I'll stop. Is it okay if I start? Yes. All right. So starting with our first example, OA extended, side bent right, rotated left. We're going to be positioning to our restricted barrier, which is flexed, side bent left, rotated right. In order to do that, we're going to take our left hand and we're going to be using it to cradle the occiput. So we're going to take either our thumb and our middle finger or our thenar eminence and our middle finger and we're going to contact the occipital condyles and we're going to be taking the middle finger of our other hand and contact the anterior part of the chin to induce a little bit of flexion. The rest of our arm is going to rest against the side of the head very gently and then we're going to take both of our hands together and induce side bending to the left. So we're going to shift our body to the left to induce side bending to the left with both hands and then slight rotation to the right shifting the tension across that occipital condyle uh, from our thenar eminence uh, anterior to the right. So finding our restricted barrier with a little bit of flexion, side bending left and rotation to the right. We're then going to have our patient move to their freedoms of motion. So go ahead and uh, tilt your head up, pushing your chin against my finger. As they're pushing into extension, we're going to provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds, and then we'll have our patient relax. So go ahead and relax. After they relax, we're also going to relax. We're going to pause and hold it at that same treatment position. And then after one to two seconds, we will feel the tension at the occiput ease up a little bit and move into further flexion. And we can follow it into additional side bending and rotation. And that might only be a millimeter of progress to the next restricted barrier. And then at that next restricted barrier, we're going to have our patient tilt their head up again. So go ahead and push your chin up to the ceiling. Good. And we provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds. And then we'll have our patient relax. Go ahead and relax. And then after a pause, we can reposition with additional flexion, side bending to the left and rotation to the right. And then go ahead and tilt your head up against me. And we can also, as an optional step, employ oculocephalogyric reflexes by having our patient look up towards their forehead. So go ahead and look up towards their forehead. And they can do that as an enhancing maneuver to uh, add some additional reflexive extension at the occiput while we provide isometric resistance. And then go ahead and relax and look forward. And then after one to two seconds, we can follow to the new restricted barrier with additional flexion, side bending to the left and rotation to the right. So go ahead and tilt your head up again, look up to the ceiling again, or look up towards your forehead. And then relax. And then after three to five times, we can return our patient back to a neutral position and then reassess for somatic dysfunction. So if instead we had a flex dysfunction, so for this example, OA flexed, side bent right, rotated left. We'll again use our left hand to cradle under the occiput and our right hand on the chin and along the side of the head. But instead of putting our middle finger on the anterior aspect of the chin, we'll put it inferior to the chin. So we want to be careful not to go too far posterior and then make it uncomfortable for our patient to breathe or give them the sensation of choking. Instead, we're going to stay just inferior to the tip of the uh, chin and we can use one or two fingers and we're going to rest our arm against the side of their head and again, induce extension by pushing up on the chin and then inducing side bending by shifting our body and inducing side bending right at the occipital condyle and adding a little bit of rotation to get to the restricted barrier. And then we're going to have our patient this time flex their head forward. So go ahead and tilt your head forward against my finger. And we're going to provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds. And then we're going to have our patient relax. So go ahead and relax. And we're going to pause. And after one to two seconds, we'll follow the relaxation of the OA as it moves into further extension and side bending to the left and rotation to the right. Again, focusing our contact on that occipital condyle on the left side. 
So once we reach our new restricted barrier, we'll have our patient flex forward against us. So go ahead and tilt your head forward. And as an optional step, we can also employ oculocephalogyric reflexes by having our patient look down. So go ahead and look towards your toes. And that will enhance our isometric contraction by adding a reflexive flexion at the suboccipital area. And then go ahead and relax. And then we'll pause and then add some additional extension, side bending, and rotation. Then go ahead and tip your chin down and look down as well. And after three to five seconds, we'll have them relax. So go ahead and relax. And then after three to five times, we'll return our patient back to a neutral position and then reassess for somatic dysfunction. So while OA dysfunctions will commonly have a flexion or extension preference of motion, there are some instances where you will have a dysfunction that's present in side bending and rotation that will worsen in both flexion and extension. In that instance, we'll call that a neutral dysfunction and we won't be able to employ flexion or extension as effectively to help treat that dysfunction. So instead, we're gonna be utilizing either side bending or rotation to engage our restricted barrier and provide isometric resistance. So for an example of OA neutral, side bending right, rotation left, we're again gonna use our left hand cradled on the occiput, our right hand resting on the chin and not really inducing any flexion or extension, but instead just providing some stabilization. We're gonna rest our forearm against the side of their head and focus now on our side bending component and our rotation component while maintaining the OA in a relatively neutral position. So now here, if we wanted to engage our rotation barrier, we can take our fingers and put it on the left side of the chin just to help support that left side. And then we're gonna have our patient turn their head to the left. So go ahead and turn your head to the left. And that will engage the rotation barrier. And after three to five seconds, we can have our patient relax. And then we'll pause. And after one to two seconds, we can engage further side bending to the left, rotation to the right to get to the new restricted barrier. Then we'll have our patient turn their head to the left. So go ahead and turn your head to the left. We can also employ oculocephalogyric reflexes by having our patient look to the left as well. So go ahead and look to the left. These reflexes can be very helpful in instances where a patient cannot induce as much gross motion or when gross motion is more painful. And then relax. And then we would reposition to the new restricted barrier and then repeat that for three to five times, return back to a neutral position and then reassess for somatic dysfunction. We can also, instead of engaging the rotation barrier, we can engage more of the side bending barrier by again, positioning, inducing side bending to the left and rotation to the right while maintaining the occiput in a relatively neutral position. And then we'll have our patient engage the side bending barrier. So go ahead and bring your right ear to your right shoulder. So they're engaging side bending to the right while we're providing isometric resistance with our forearm and then we'll have our patient relax. They relax, we relax, and then we'll gently position into further side bending and rotation without applying too much pressure on the side of their head. And then we'll repeat those contraction relaxation cycles for a total of three to five times and then return our patient back to a neutral position and then reassess for somatic dysfunction. Our next example is the AA. So for a dysfunction of AA rotated left, we're gonna position our AA to the barrier of rotation to the right. So the AA is a purely rotation joint and has little to no flexion, extension, or side bending. So we're gonna be engaging purely rotation. So in this neutral position, we're gonna be putting our middle fingers on C2 and then our index fingers on the transverse processes of C1. And we can find those transverse processes directly posterior to the angle of the mandible and also uh, inferior or slightly anterior to the mastoid, depending on our patient's anatomy. And we'll monitor at the transverse processes and use our middle fingers to monitor at C2. And then we're gonna engage our restricted barrier of rotation to the right. So slowly rotating to the right until we feel a restricted barrier. And right around here, I'm beginning to feel tension between my fingers and I'll find my feathers edge of the restricted barrier. And then I'm gonna have my patient just rotate to the left. So go ahead and turn your head to the left against me. And we're gonna provide isometric resistance while avoiding too much squeezing of the head and too much pressure on any particular point of the head. And then relax. And then after a brief pause, we'll move 
into further rotation to the right to the new restricted barrier. And then we can have our patient turn to the left. And as an optional step, we can also employ oculocephalogyric reflexes. So go ahead and look to the left as well. And that will engage reflexive rotation to the left of the cervical spine. And then after three to five seconds, we can have them relax. So go ahead and relax. And then we can pause and then move to the next restricted barrier. So after three to five contraction, relaxation, and repositioning cycles, we can return our patient back to a neutral position and then reassess for somatic dysfunction. For our next region, for our typical cervicals, C2 to C7, we're going to be engaging side bending and rotation to the same direction. So with an example of C5 flexed rotated right, side bent right, we're going to find C5 first. So starting with our middle fingers at the articular pillars and finding C2. C3, C4, and C5, we can see a preference in side bending to the right and rotation to the right. So we're going to engage a barrier in side bending to the left and rotation to the left. And we're going to be using the same contact and motions that we would use to diagnose that segment. So here with our fingers on the articular pillars, we're going to induce a little bit of translation to the right, which is going to engage side bending to the left. And once we meet that restricted barrier, we can add a little bit of rotation to the left by just gently pushing anteriorly on the right articular pillar to induce rotation to the left just at that segment. And we want to be careful to not exaggerate our rotation and instead to focus on just mobilizing the segment that we're interested in, and in this case is C5. So C5 rotated to the left and segment to the left and also extended. We can induce extension by pushing anteriorly on the articular pillars and allowing the occiput to drift into further extension. And now that we're here at our restricted barrier, we can have our patient turn to their freedom of motion, which is to the right. So go ahead and turn your head to the right. And we're going to provide isometric resistance by allowing our right uh, thumb and thinner eminence to rest against their cheek to provide isometric resistance. And after three to five seconds, we can have our patient relax. Go ahead and relax. And then we'll pause for one to two seconds. We'll feel relaxation at that segment, following into further side bending and rotation and further extension to the new restricted barrier. And then we're going to have our patient turn to the right again. So go ahead and turn to your right. We can, as an optional step, employ oculocephalogyric reflexes. So go ahead and look to the right and that will engage a reflexive rotation to the right at the segment. And after three to five seconds, we can have our patient relax. And after a brief pause, we reposition to the new restricted barrier. And after three to five times, we bring our patient back to a neutral position and then reassess for somatic dysfunction.